Hey, what's up, Math One? It's Mr. Bainey here again, taking a look at lesson 14.3, constructing exponential functions. In the previous two lessons, we learned all about geometric sequences. We learned about them, their, their definition. We know that it has a common ratio, and then also how to write rules for them or how to write the equations for them. So as a very, very quick example, if we have the sequence uh, 3, 6, 12, 24, and so on, this is a geometric sequence because if I take the first term to get the second term, the one right after it, we multiply it by 2. And then multiply that by 2 again, and I get my third term, multiply that 12 by 2, and I get my fourth term. Okay, so notice that I wrote the numbers up top to, to show that that is going to represent our input our, or our n when we were writing the rules last lesson. Our explicit rule would look like this, f of n or a sub n, if you're going to use subscript notation, is going to equal our first term times our common ratio to the n minus 1. And I show you this because... Remember that the n is a part of our exponent, right? The, the variables in the exponent. And this is exactly why we call these exponential functions. Okay, so even though we didn't call it exponential functions, we called it explicit recursive rule for geometric sequences. They act exactly the same way as exponential functions. Okay, so let's look at a formal definition of what an exponential function is. Before we go to that page, I do want to point out that the uh, exponential functions we'll be dealing with today are going to be pr uh, primarily discrete. And remember that discrete means that it consists of isolated points or you don't connect the points together. Um, continuous, if a function is continuous, which is what we're going to do uh, next lesson, I believe. That means we're going to connect the dots, right? Connect all your points together. So continuous, it's like it keeps going. So you can like draw your graph without lifting up your pencil. To draw a discrete function or to graph it, you'd have to put a dot, pick up your pencil, put another dot, pick up your pencil, and so on. Here on page 665, we see the formal definition of an exponential function. Okay, and this is going to be super important moving forward because all of our exponential functions will look like this. And you could be thinking, hey, this sort of looks like the equation or the explicit rule equation. And that's because it... it it's kind of modeled after that. So you'll see a lot of similarities here, except it doesn't work exactly the same way. Okay, so, but it does say that A is, it doesn't mention it here, it doesn't. It just says it's a real number. But it does mention that the constant ratio, okay, this right here, we also call that the common ratio. Remember when we're dealing with geometric sequences, okay, the common ratio is B, right? In, in the last one, it, we use it as R. So that's one of the changes. A is actually not going to be our first term. It's going to be our y-intercept, right? So it's when x equals 0. So we'll see what that looks like when we do some examples. Okay, so why we want to look at f of x equals A times B to the x. Okay, I'm going to do um, this example B on page 666. I typically don't do it, but we only have one your turn. And I, and I want you to, to try it out for yourself um, before I actually go over it. So in this one, the equation is f of x equals 3 times 4 thirds to the x. And we have a domain. The domain, it, it tells us to use just those x values that we'll plug in, okay? So 
Had your calculators. Um, this is a repeating decimal. I recommend you leave these as fractions because um, you'll have some repeating decimals and have to estimate and all that. It's okay for graphing, but uh, uh, our answers won't be exact. Our points won't be exact. Uh, so since we will be plugging in our domain values into an exponent, I anticipate that there will be some mistakes when we're dealing with the negative exponents. Okay, because it's probably been a while since you've used and, and dealt with a negative exponent. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, F of negative 2. So now we're plugging in negative 2. That's our x. Is going to look like this. 3 times 4 thirds to the negative 2 power. What the negative does is it makes this the reciprocal. So instead of 4 thirds, it's 3 fourths. Okay, that's what the negative does. Then the 2 does what you think it does. It squares it, right? So it times itself. So that means uh, 1. I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. We don't take the reciprocal yet. Uh, I still put 4 over 3. It's, it's 1 divided by 4 thirds, which takes the reciprocal, right? 1 divided by 4 thirds is the same as 1 times 3 fourths. So that's when you do the reciprocal. So ultimately, we have the reciprocal uh, 3 times 3 over 4, both squared, which means 3 times 9 over 16. And that becomes 27 over 16, right? Because I could 3, instead of using 3, I could do 3 over 1 and just multiply straight across. Uh, 16 goes in once, and we have, looks like 11 left over over 16. So when we plug in negative 2, we get 1 and 11 sixteenths, which is a little more than 1 and a half. If we plug in negative 1, I'm going to try to show some work here on the side as best I can. Negative 1 would look like 3 times 4 thirds to the negative 1, which would be 3 times 3 over 4. Okay, just swap it. Right, and I don't write the exponent because the exponent's 1, and 1 doesn't do anything. It's just a negative. And that is 9 fourths when I multiply, which is 2 and a fourth, 2 and a quarter. So that's my next one. Okay, really take it slow on these ones with the negative exponents because, again, that's where you're going to run into some trouble. Next one, 3 times 4 thirds to the 0. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. So 4 thirds to the 0 is 1. 3 times 1, which is 3. These generally are the easiest ones to crank out and output. One, three times four thirds to the one means just three times four thirds, and that's equal to four, right? If I multiply, I get 12 over three, which reduces to four. So you get a nice little answer there. Uh, now we have three times four thirds to the second power, which is three times 16 over nine. And that will reduce. Let's see, I'll just actually show this. This here reduces until I get three on the bottom. So it's 16 over three, which is five and a third. Five and one third for our output. And it's already done uh, x equals three and got our output for that. Now, one thing I do want to point out if we compare this exponential function to f of x 
equals a b to the x. That means that our a is 3 and our b is 4 thirds. Okay, a equals 3, you actually see it in your table. It's where 0 is x, or x is 0, and we get 3. That means that that's our y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis. That's going to be so helpful to us when we're graphing. Okay, and when we do some more graphing, that's where we're starting, really. And then 4 thirds is going to be our common ratio. So if you were to take 1 and 11 sixteenths from our table, that's this first output that we got, if you multiply that by 4 thirds, you get the next one. Okay, multiply it by 4 thirds, you get the next one. And so on. Okay, you can do it in your calculator if you don't believe me. Okay, calculate it out. So that's what makes it our common ratio, and that's what makes this an exponential function because we are repeatedly multiply by four thirds to get our next term. Now let's graph it, see what this looks like. And since we have some fractions, we're just gonna do the best we can. If X is negative two, I need to go to a little bit bigger than one and a half. It's about there. Um, if X is negative one, I get two and a quarter. Then if x is 0, I get 3. Next one, I get 4. The one after that, I get 5 and a third. And then 7, 7 and 1 ninth. Okay. Something like that. So what I want you to think about first is, is this thing linear? You can graph it as accurate as possible. And uh, what, would it, what would it look like if you drew it as a curve? Now, you're not going to draw straight lines connecting these points once we start doing that. You don't need to do it here because we were given a domain that we graph. So you just make it discrete for now. On the next page, 667, go and give this a try. Pause it. And uh, in a few moments, you'll see the solution pop up here. You'll see the graph and everything. Give it a try. Here you see the outputs that we get from all of the domain values. So if x is negative 3, we get this. If x is negative 2, this, and so on. Right, the, out, the inputs are the exponents that I have here. Okay, so I didn't actually do a table, but I wanted to show the progression of the, the work, the thinking that you should be doing. And you don't need to show every single piece of this, but I wanted to make it clear on how I'm getting my outputs. Okay, so there isn't too much question there. Uh, so if x is negative 3, then I'm going to go up one, a little bit over 1. Uh, for negative 2, I'm going to go up a little bit closer to 2. Um, then uh, 2 and 2 thirds. Then our y intercept is 4. Okay, again, take a look at your function equation. Um, for 1, it's 6. And then for 2, it's 9. And there it is. That's all you got to do. Okay, just graph those points. Now, I do want to also talk about example B here on the next page, uh, just because it involves percentages, um, and it's not a part of the your turn. So we'll, we'll take a look at both. So we have a savings account with initial balance of $1,000. Initial balance means that's where we're starting. This is our y-intercept. It earns 1% interest per month. That means the account balance grows by a factor of 1.01, 1 .01, right? 0 .01 is 1%. Uh, 
uh, we're multiplying by 1.01 .01 because the one is like 100%, it's the uh, initial balance, plus the 0 0.01. Uh, so 1.01 .01 is our common ratio, or our constant ratio is what they call it in this lesson. Um, so the account balance in dollars B of T is an exponential function of the time T in months after the initial deposit. So T is time in months and B is balance. So A is going to be the value of the original balance, which is 1,000. And the value of B is the factor, or it's the common ratio in which it changes, which is 1.01. .01. Okay. Again, this is the 1% increase. 1% increase means add 0 0.01 to 100%. So our function is going to be B of T equals 1,000 times 1.01 .01 to the t, right? Not to the x this time because our input is t. And that's it for just writing the equation from a description. For your turn number six, if you'd like to pause it, you can, but I'm just gonna start going through this. A piece of paper that is 0.2 millimeters thick is folded. Okay, it's that thick and it's folded. And we wanna write an equation for the thickness t of the paper in millimeters as a function of the number of folds n. That means you want to write t of n. Okay, t is thickness, n is the number of folds. And it just says it's folded. I'm assuming it's just folded in half, and then it's folded in half again, and so on. Okay, so t of n, if it starts out at 0.2 millimeters, that's our y-intercept, or our in this case, our A folded. If, if we're folding it in half, think about what's happening to the thickness. The thickness is being multiplied by 2. It's being doubled. That's our common ratio. And that means that our function or our equation is going to be our y-intercept, which is 0 0.2 times 2 to the n, okay, something like that. If I was folding it in thirds every single time, then it would be 3 to the n. If I was folding it in fourths every single time, it would, you know, multiply it by 4, the thickness, that would be 4 to the n, and so on. Okay. And the last example that we'll look at, I urge you to look at um, part A on the previous page of this, just because it gives you an, another example just to follow um, in case you have questions about this. This one is um, slightly more challenging uh, just because we're having to um, come up with the, the common ratio in this one, okay? And here we have here we have uh, two um, terms you could call it right. If our input is negative two, we get two fifths, and if our input is negative one, we get two. Notice that negative two and negative one are right next to each other; they're consecutive, right? That we only have to add one to get to the next one. So we could say that negative one, or sorry, we can say that we can say that uh, if we call this a term, then two is the next term after it. And interestingly enough, if I add one from here, I get to zero. And when our input is zero, then that's actually our y-intercept. Right? That's where we want to start. So sometimes you'll have to work backwards, sometimes you have to work forwards. It depends on what inputs you're, you're given, right? What domain you're given. Uh, but we want to look at, okay, what do we multiply to get from here to here, right? What is the common ratio? All we have to do, if you remember from the previous lesson, 
is we take a term like 2 and we divide it by the previous term that comes before it. This is why when you put in your inputs and your outputs, you do it like in order of your inputs. So 2 divided by 2 fifths is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, 5 over 2, and that is equal to 5. So I get 5 here. And interesting, I get uh, the same exact number for my common ratio and for my y-intercept. So here's our, here's our equation. f of x equals, you know, let me write the general form first. A is the y-intercept, which is 5. B, with the exponent, is the common ratio, which is also 5. And that's to the x. So this is our equation for uh, for these two points, I guess. Um, and it says, it, you know, it doesn't say that it's an exponential function, but it's uh, I think that's a given because we're, you know, in in this module. So assume that these functions you're dealing with, even though you're given two points, that it is exponential and it's not linear. Okay, because there's a big difference there. That's it for this lesson. Sorry I ran a little bit long, but I hope it was helpful. Uh, you have your assignment to work on and uh, definitely bring back any questions that you have. Um, this is all about just knowing how to deal with these exponential functions, how to graph them, and how to write some of them. Okay, thanks again for watching. Have a good day.